a while ago I showed this uh, power supply kit which I ordered from eBay. It was being advertised as an LM317 0 to 15 volts 0 to 5 amps adjustable power supply kit and it looked quite uh, promising. Upon receiving the kit and taking a closer look uh, there are two things to mention. One, the power supply is not based on the LM317 but on the TL431. They use the TL431s instead of op-amps in this power supply design. And two, there isn't much documentation about this uh, power supply to better understand how it works. All you get is a low quality schematic and a picture with the assembled board. So I think it's better to call this the TL431 power supply kit. Here is the schematic of this PCB and if we take a closer look at the left side we can see the LM317 is just stepping down a secondary rail to be used for a cooling fan. It's interesting how they use this uh, thermistor in the feedback divider of the LM317 to adjust the output voltage and uh, consequently the speed of the cooling fan in relation to the change in temperature. I won't go over the details of the assembly process. If you're new to this and would like to learn how to assemble these types of kits, I will link another video of mine where I explain the details. Today I'm just going to show that I started with the smallest parts, the resistors and the diodes. Then I continued adding parts, uh, leaving the biggest components like the electrolytic capacitors for the final part. The components used are low quality, but uh, that is to be expected from these cheap kits coming from China, so no surprises there. If you'd like to use some better quality parts, I would suggest replacing the electrolytics and the TL431s with uh, ones that you sourced from known sources. Also, a nice upgrade would be to use some 10 turn pots instead of the supplied ones to get some finer adjustment but I just used the originally supplied parts to see what kind of results we can get with those. I would uh, recommend being extra careful when aligning the transistors because uh, they've used this universal footprint and you can easily get that wrong. I know I got it wrong the first try, so pause the video here and uh, save a snapshot. This is how your assembled board should look. Also, I've been uh, burned by the LEDs in the past and uh, normally the wedge marks the cathode on the LED, but on the PCB silk screen, the wedge, uh, which is printed, marks the positive. And there is an additional diode sign inside that that correctly indicates the cathodes to the opposite side. So bottom line is, do not follow the wedge, which is printed on the PCB, follow the diode sign printed inside, and uh, maybe check the polarity of the LEDs with a multimeter before soldering them. Another hint on the parts is this component looking like a small glass diode with no markings. This is your thermistor. It's used in the feedback of the LM317 fan circuit, so don't mistake this for a diode. As usual, when the assembly is complete, do a final visual inspection just to make sure you got all the components in the correct position and with the correct value. This might save you from the magic smoke. As you can see, I haven't populated the LM317 because that should be on a heatsink and I won't be using a fan anyway during uh, these tests. Ideally, you would use a 15 volt uh, 5 amp transformer for this power supply kit, but I'm using this uh, 17 volt 3 amps toroidal transformer. It's the closest I could find and uh, it has been sourced from my local distributor, Comet Electronics, at a cost of uh, $16. And uh, I cannot recommend any places where you can get this. You must find the local supplier because it's quite heavy to be ordered uh, overseas. After you have completed the assembly and verified that the power supply is indeed providing a voltage output, there is an adjustment to be made on this board. And uh, it's done through this uh, variable resistor VR3 on the uh, PCB. And the uh, procedure needs to be done uh, like this. First, adjust the uh, current potentiometer to the minimum, then adjust your voltage output to exactly 5 volts. You'll need two multimeters, one to measure the output voltage and another one uh, on the ammeter to measure the uh, output current. 
Now connect the uh, ammeter to short the output and adjust uh, VR3 lower its value so adjust to the left uh, until you get the smallest current possible okay so right now I'm turning but the value isn't going any lower so that's the uh, smallest current uh, I can adjust now remove the uh, short on the output and we can see the voltage has drifted for the uh, from the 5.00 uh, uh, was it 7 or 8 so now we need to go back to VR3 and adjust to the right until we get the same voltage on the output. So I'm going to slowly turn this in the opposite direction. And right now we got the same voltage we had previously. So let's check now what our minimum current is. So our minimum current is something like 16 milliamps. Uh, you could probably get better than this. You, you will probably get different results. It all depends on how you adjust VR3. And there isn't much documentation on this power supply. But I'm assuming this is the minimum current uh, the power supply uh, can uh, adjust and remain stable. That is what I think so far about this adjustment. But in any case, you need to do this adjustment to have the power supply operating uh, in optimal conditions. So now that we have a working power supply, let's do some basic tests and see what kind of performance we get from this uh, power supply. This is my setup. I have a switch on the input which will turn on or off the power coming into the power supply. Then I have this uh, common mode uh, rejection filter uh, because I was getting all sorts of crap injected from the mains. Uh, I added this common mode filter and it seems to filter out some of the noise but occasionally I get this uh, strange uh, 100 hertz uh, waveform uh, on the input coming in from the mains and there's nothing I can do about that. On the output I have the possibility to connect or disconnect this uh, 4 ohm resistor this will uh, act as a uh, 1 amp load at um, over 1 amp at 5 volts. And I also have the oscilloscope probe connected right at the output of the power supply. So first we're going to be looking at power on behavior with no load. The power supply is set for 5 volts. I have the scope set to DC capture. We're going to be doing a single capture and you'll, you'll uh, hear the rocker switch when I turn the power supply on. Okay, so we got a very small amount of overshoot on this uh, try. Let's, let's measure that using our cursors. So let's call this our uh, baseline. And this is our overshoot. We got about 280 millivolts of overshoot, which is, um, I don't know if the oscilloscope is measuring this correctly, uh, about 4% overshoot. That sounds about right. So uh, I think that's acceptable uh, given a uh, 5 volts rail. Let's try to do this uh, test again and see if we get a different result. This time we got a slightly higher overshoot and a much quicker waveform. It might have to do with uh, the fact that the capacitors, the filtering capacitors were charged or discharged at the time we started the previous test. So right now we're getting 820 millivolts uh, overshoot, which is uh, too much in my opinion. Like. Uh, this could uh, certainly be a problem for some sensitive electronics. And this appears to be uh, the worst case scenario. I've done this test a few times and it appears that 800 millivolts is the worst case scenario. Now we're going to try the same test but with a 4 ohm load on the output which uh, should apply roughly 1.2 amps of load on the output. We can see the load 
uh, had a very small overshoot let's try to measure that maybe 240 millivolts of overshoot and uh, it took let's see how long it took about two milliseconds to get to uh, the desired voltage on the output let's redo this uh, test just to make sure we get the same result this is test number two with the, with the forum load we got a bit of a weird waveform this time we got an overshoot and then an under an undershoot uh, before stabilizing so yeah doesn't uh, look very clean let's try to measure that looks like the undershoot was about 250 millivolts let's call it that and the overshoot about 180 millivolts and I'm gonna do this test a uh, third time uh, just to uh, make sure there aren't any other funny things going on here this is test number three with the forum load and we got just an overshoot this time slightly bigger at uh, 660 maybe 700 millivolts uh, of overshoot so yeah this uh, power supply doesn't look very clean it's not the worst I've seen but uh, it's certainly not something you would want to use for some sensitive electronics like uh, knowing it could uh, overshoot this much you would not trust this power supply to be used on anything uh, sensitive so this is a uh, power off test to see how the power supply will behave when the power is cut off from the uh, transformer um, there is no load on the output and this test is pretty important because you might have uh, some uh, device powered from this power supply and you simply switch off the power and you want to see what will happen with the waveform uh, when the power is cut off it might overshoot it might undershoot it might make some funny waveform that might uh, damage your uh, device connected to the power supply so I'm gonna cut power to the power supply right now wow that is some funny uh, waveform going on we saw a, uh, a drop it bounced back to 5 volts and then the final drop and discharge of the output capacitors that doesn't look right at all this could cause like i don't think this would damage uh, a product a device powered from this power supply but it would certainly uh, cause a glitch under some situations when the power drops and then goes back and then drops again and uh, i think this uh, might be uh, the cause of this type of waveform might be how this uh, circuit is constructed because I believe it's der deriving a secondary rail uh, straight from the output of the bridge rectifier and uh, like the main rail is bypassed with those big uh, uh, 4000 microfarad capacitors there's two of them so there is enough bulk storage energy in there and uh, I believe that is the second waveform discharging from those capacitors but the first waveform might be that secondary rail which has smaller decoupling at just 47 microfarads and if that smaller rail drops first uh, the regulation of the power supply might stop and then somehow the circuit shuts off and then we continue to see the um, bulk uh, 4000 uh, microfarad capacitors discharging now let's do the same test but with the 4 ohm resistor on the output and we can see that with a load uh, the output just drops really quickly and uh, clean there is uh, no sign of that other uh, drop before the main one yeah if we look closer there is a small overshoot of uh, roughly 200 millivolts maybe less uh, when the power is turned off with a load on the output here is another test I did I had the uh, load connected on the output 
and then I uh, suddenly disconnected the load to see if there is any change in the output voltage and we can see there is a slight overshoot and then an undershoot when there is a sudden change in, in load in this case 1.2 amps which is uh, suddenly removed there is maybe under 200 millivolts of uh, overshoot and then maybe the same value of undershoot there might be some um, contact bounce there because I just removed the alligator clip from the resistor. Um, it's relatively stable, it's not ideal, but uh, I don't think uh, this uh, poses any risk to a, a device connected to the output. There, is, there isn't anything crazy going on with the waveform on this test. Now let's also take a look at the voltage ripple that this uh, power supply will have on its output. Right now the power supply is turned off and uh, we can see I have the oscilloscope probe connected right at the output and we can see the peak to peak noise is uh, slightly under 2 millivolts as measured by the oscilloscope. Now if I turn the power supply on we should see that increase. With the power supply turned on, we are seeing slightly under or around the uh, 4 millivolts peak to peak uh, value. This is the noise with uh, no load. Let's look at the wider time frame. There doesn't seem to be anything uh, wrong going on. The noise level is uh, pretty constant at 4 millivolts peak to peak. Now let's introduce the 4 ohm load uh, that should uh, the power supply should output about 1.2 amps into that load and uh, see how that affects the noise. So I'm connecting the resistor right now and the noise increased. Uh, we are now seeing about 7 millivolts uh, peak to peak but it's not that bad actually considering the 1.2 amps it's outputting right now. It's a pretty good noise level and uh, that is to be expected from an analog power supply. There is also a forum thread on the EV blog forum where uh, somebody was asking uh, details about this power supply and uh, there was a user uh, commenting on the subject and he said that uh, because it's using TL431 instead of uh, some jelly bean op amps it can achieve a lower output noise because of that. Uh, now, I'm not an analog guru, I'm not uh, sure how I would uh, explain that, but it sure appears to be the case with this power supply, it has a low noise uh, output. In the end, I think there are some things that are not right with this power supply, so I don't think I will be using it in any project, I don't think I will be building it into an enclosure. First, I don't like the overshoot behavior we're seeing on power one, and I certainly don't like that uh, double drop waveform we're seeing on power off. Then there is the 50 Hz oscillation that we can see on the output and I'm not sure if that's caused by insufficient filtering on the rectified input or if it's something else that causes an oscillation but I don't like having that on the output of uh, the power supply. Sure the design looks interesting and uh, it uses jelly bean parts but lacks some uh, stability on uh, areas as shown during my tests. So I cannot recommend this power supply unless maybe you understand how it works and you can maybe make some improvements by fine tuning some of the component values. Uh, otherwise the results are far from ideal with the supplied kit and uh, values. As usual I will place links in the description uh, where you can get this power supply and some other resources. So please check them out and uh, don't forget to hit the like button and maybe subscribe to if you are uh, new to the channel. I will see you next time.